Hi everyone, welcome back to Online Classroom Jaegu Duo. In this video, we are going to look at electrostatic charges. Have you ever had this experience when you reach out to grab a grocery trolley? There is a spark. You got electric shocked. What happened? Okay, what happened actually is there is a transfer of electric charges between our body and the trolley that has static electric charges. These static electric charges are known as electrostatic charges. Well, first of all, we have to know that electric charges has two different types. They consist of positive charges and negative charges. Positive charges is known as proton, whereas negative charges is known as electron. Well, when two same kind of charges come together, they don't like it. They will push each other away. So, same charges repel each other. Repel means push away. Okay? But when a proton meets an electron, now they are different. When they are different, they attract each other, meaning they will move towards each other. They become friends. So remember this concept. The attraction and repulsion. Attraction meaning they come together. Repulsion means they push each other away. So the attraction and repulsion between the electric charges are known as electrostatic forces. Well, when two different types of objects rub together, there must be some kind of friction between two objects, okay, for this to happen. Electrons can run from one object to the other. Okay, only the electrons can move. Remember this. Only the electrons can jump from one place to the other when the two objects are rubbed together. Protons will always stay where they are at. Protons do not move. Remember that. That is very important. So, an object is neutral when they have the same number of protons and electrons. Let, just like this diagram here, we have 5 protons and 5 electrons. So, they are the same number. It is neutral. But, just like I said just now, the electrons can run, right? The electrons can move, can be transferred from one place or one object to the other. And this object obviously has some electron coming in. See, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We have 7 electrons and 5 protons. Okay, the protons do not move. So this object has gained electron. It receives some extra electron. When you have more electron compared to protons, what happens? This object becomes negatively charged. And this poor object here loses electrons. The electrons run away. See, only two are left. There are five protons and two electrons. So when one object loses electrons, electrons run away. What happens is that object becomes positively charged because now we have more protons. So let's look at this one activity. We will need a piece of woolen cloth and a comb and some shredded paper meaning you tear up a piece of paper make them into small pieces and leave them on your desk what we do is we will rub the comb with the woolen cloth so remember when two objects rub together the electrons can move so in this case the electrons actually move from the woolen cloth into the comb and now comb receives electrons okay the comb receives electrons which means this comb has become negatively charged if we bring the comb close to the shredded paper earlier the papers will be attracted to the comb it's as if a magic happened this paper suddenly got picked up by the comb on its own 
So what happened here is because there is a force of attraction between the positive charges. Remember, these papers they are still neutral, but there is proton in them. Okay, so the protons here are attracted by the electrons, the the the, the excess electrons that is on the comb. Because now the comb is negatively charged, that is what happened here. Okay. Well, how do we know if something is charged, whether it is neutral, whether it is positive or negative? We cannot see with our eyes the protons and neutrons. Well, there is a device called electroscope. Electroscope is a little device that we can use to detect the existence of electric charges of an object. Meaning, we can use this uh, little gadget here, the device here, to find out if this object is neutral or it is charged. It looks something like this. So what happens is if we bring a neutral object near the electroscope, nothing happens. At the bottom part of electroscope, you will find the gold leaf. They don't move. If the neutral object is brought to the electroscope. However, if you bring a positively charged or negatively charged object near the electroscope, what happens at the bottom of electroscope, the gold leaf diverges. Diverges means they open. Okay, the gold leaves open because of the same charges, they will repel each other. What do you mean? Let's take a look one by one. If you bring a positively charged object near the electroscope, well, this is positive here. Okay, that means there are lots of protons here without enough electrons. The electrons from the bottom will run upward. Remember, electron is the active one. It will run. It will. It will move. Okay. So the electrons get transferred from the gold leaf upward towards the object, the positive object. So when that happens, at the bottom here, at the bottom here, the gold leaf, both of them become positively charged. So if this is positive, and this one is also positive, they become the same kind of charges. They don't like each other. They will push each other away. They will repel. That's why the gold leaf will diverge when you bring a positively charged object near the electroscope. How about if we bring a negatively charged object near the electroscope? Well, the other way around. Okay, the electron from the object will move downwards towards the gold leaf and now both this uh, both this leaf here become negatively charged and because they are the same charge they push each other again okay so when there is a charged up object whether positive or negative the gold leaf will diverge Another example of electrostatic in our daily life is the lightning. Other than the first example that we look at <laughs> when we get a shock from the trolley. Okay, so in our natural phenomena, there is one that is the lightning. Okay, how is lightning formed? There is actually a friction between the cloud and the air. Remember, Jekudio mentioned earlier, two objects have to rub against each other. There must be a friction. So the cloud is always moving in the sky. So the cloud is rubbing against the air. And this causes the clouds to be charged. And what happened is, say there are, elect uh, there are electrons here, they become negatively charged. The electrons, remember they are active. So they move or they transfer from the cloud to the earth that is positively charged. So what happened is this electron actually run towards the earth and that is when we see the lightning. And it can also happen between the clouds, okay? So electron can also jump from one cloud to the other cloud when there is opposite charges. That is how lightning is formed. Well, if the electron on its way to the earth strike a building, oh, 
I don't want that to happen. None of us would like that, right? So lightning conductor, just like the one you see in this picture here, is installed at buildings. Okay. So what it does is it, it provides a path, a way for the electric charges to flow to the lightning conductor straight into the ground. So the electric charges flow into the ground without hurting the building. So by doing this, we can protect our building from being struck by lightning. Have you ever tried to wipe your TV screen? It is pretty frustrating, isn't it? Because normally after we wipe our TV screen, very quickly they become dusty again. Almost in a split second i would say okay why this is because tv screen is positively charged and it will attract the dust okay that has or that it has the negative charges so tv screen become dusty very quickly we can solve this by wiping our tv screen with a type of cloth called the microfiber cloth this type of material is actually anti-electrostatic so if we use our microfiber cloth to wipe our tv screen then they will not become dusty too quickly well that's all from jekutyo in this video i shall see you in our coming video okay bye if you have learned something new from this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.